Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James and welcome back to our menu system tutorial series. Now, in the last video we set up our graphics options so that we could turn on full screen and VSync and we set up our graphics uh, visually here but we haven't got our resolution system working just yet. So we're going to dive into doing that now. So let's uh, stop this running here. I'm going to go into my options screen. I'm going to open up the script and what we want to have is a variety of options available to us so that we can use them in our game and our players can switch between them. Uh, you obviously want to use some common resolution values basically in your games. Now what I want to do to do that is I want to keep track of uh, which uh, options are available. So we want to create a list of resolutions that we could possibly have in our game. So to do that I obviously need to have a width and a height value. So I could create a list of just vector twos that would work perfectly fine but just to make it a little bit more interesting we can create a custom little uh, variable for us to use in our game so what i'm going to do is go down to the very bottom of my script and i'm going to create down the bottom here a public class that we're going to call res item and then in here we're going to create two public int values a horizontal Oops, horizontal, there we go, horizontal and a vertical. And this is all we're going to have in here. So this is a very simple item that will allow us to reference it really easily and allow us to see, hey, what's the horizontal value we want to use and a vertical value we want to use. So as I said, this could very simply just be a vector too that we use, but it's, it's fun to try out some new different things along the way and see different use cases for different elements. One thing I do want to do though is make it so that I can see this back in Unity. So if I go up here, we know we want to use a list of these resolution items. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create a public list of resolution items that we're going to call uh, resolutions. Very simply and straightforward. I'm going to set that to be equal to a new list of resolution items. So this is how we would normally display a list back in Unity. But if I go back into Unity here, let that compile. After a few moments, we see in our options screen, we don't have that list visible to us. And that's because we created a custom class to use. So Unity doesn't automatically know how to show this, but we know that all that's contained within this class is two int values that are very simple for Unity to display. So what we can do is right above that, just type system dot serializable and that will make it so that the system will know how to handle this so let's save that and jump back in and now when this compiles suddenly we'll have a list of resolutions here so I'm going to add to this list so I'm going to add some default uh, kind of values to use so we got 1920 by 1080 we'll also add we're going to add two more just to keep this relatively short so 1280 by 720 again another common resolution and much smaller again but still in the 69 854 by 480 so there we go we've got three resolutions for us to use so let's jump back in here and now we need to actually do something with them so let's scroll up and above my apply graphics here i'm going to have a public void for res left so that's our resolution switching to the left then we're going to have a public void resolution right so that's going to switch us to the right so let's go here first thing we want to do is we want to have a way of keeping track of which resolution we're currently looking at in our list so i'm going to create a private int value that we're going to call selected resolution and then what we're going to do is when we press left we're going to make that number go down so selected resolution minus minus of course if that resolution was zero it'll become minus one so we don't want it to be come less than a value in our array so we're going to make sure that if our selected resolution is less than zero then selected resolution equals zero uh, you could make this go wrap around to the end of the resolution loop if you want to do but what I want to do is have it uh, 
go all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So we're going to set it to zero. As I said, you could make this say, oh, instead of going stopping at the left, make it, if you press left again, you could make it go to the uh, resolutions count minus one. We're just going to set it to zero to keep it nice and simple. So then in the resolution right here, we're going to do the opposite. So selected resolution plus plus, and then if our selected resolution is greater than our resolutions count minus one. So we have three resolutions. If the resolution becomes greater than two, which is the highest value that we can go to in, in our array here, element two. So if it becomes higher than two, well then make sure that it is always set to be selected resolutions equals resolutions count minus one. So the maximum in our current situation is two. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. We're switching the resolutions behind the scenes. So we know which ones we're accessing, but we need to update that back in here on this label here. We need this one to update to say what the current resolution is. So let's go back in here. First thing we'll need to do is a reference to that. So when we want to reference a text mesh pro element, we need to make sure at the top we're using TM Pro. And then here we can say public TMP underscore text. So TMP text that we're going to call resolution label, like so. And what I'm going to do is create a new function down here, a public void update hold on, update res label and all this is going to do is say our resolution label dot text so the text value on the resolution label object so that's again if you haven't played around with this stuff before uh, let me go to my label this bit of text is what we're going to use so we want to access this text box basically within this. So we want to say that text element is equal to from our resolutions array at whatever our selected resolution is, we want to use the horizontal value. Oops, let's go outside that box, the horizontal value, and we want to convert it to a string value, so to string. I'm going to say plus and then space x space in quotation marks and then plus again resolutions at selected resolution dot vertical dot to string. Okay, very simple and straightforward. So we want this to be updated whenever we hit our update resolution, or sorry, whenever we switch our resolution left or switch our resolution right. Oh, we should have a semicolon there. Okay, so let's save this and test this much of it out to make sure this is working. So let that compile. Then I'm gonna to go to my options screen and drag this text box from the label into that slot there. Then on our buttons here for resolution left and right, we want to make sure that both of those are using the options menu and then an option screen, res, res left and res right. So now if I go ahead and play, we should see when I move these around, it'll switch to those different resolutions. Okay, so perfect. That much is working. But of course, at the moment, this doesn't do anything. Our Apply Graphics is still using, our, our Apply Graphics, sorry, doesn't use any of this stuff at the moment, any of this resolution information that we have. So let's go back in here. And what I'm going to do is in the apply graphics section, all we have to do is say screen dot set resolution. So we need to put in three different values into this now. We need to put in a width, a height, and we also have to pass in whether it's full screen or not. So this, this requires that we tell it whether we're using full screen. So with that in mind, we don't need to use this one anymore. So I'm going to just comment that one out because we don't need to use screen not full screen anymore. So in here, we're going to say, first of all, as if we need to set the width value. So that's going to be our resolutions at selected 
resolution dot horizontal and then we need to set the height which will be our resolutions selected resolution dot uh, sorry dot vertical and then finally we need to set the whether it's full screen or not so we're going to use our full screen toggle dot is on okay so let's save this and we're going to go back into unity now unfortunately we cannot test this in the editor there's no way for this to actually work correctly in the editor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to save and i'm going to very quickly build and run the game so let's go and build and run so we can try this out take a moment there we go open up our lovely unity project and now if i hit this and then apply the graphics changes hopefully this will come across in the video but the resolution has got a lot smaller for me here if i apply that i've got it much smaller again let's go back to full if i turn off my full screen this should be a bit more obvious this time and we shrink it down there we go apply changes and there we go perfect our resolution is now changing correctly the way we want and as i said before unity will very handily remember that change you made so if i run this again it should remember that we were not full screen and that we were there we go that we had changed our size down the level but you, what you should not also have noticed there is the first resolution that was set here was 1920 by 1080 but of course that's not the resolution that our window is actually at so we need to set it so that when we start the game it reads the correct resolution for us so let's go back into our script and we're going to go up to the top here and in our start function after all our vsync stuff is set we're going to do a little thing here to find the correct resolution so first thing i'm going to do is create a bool value called found resolution i'm going to set it to be false by default and then i'm going to loop through all the resolutions that we have currently so i'm going to say for our int i equals zero while i is less than our resolutions count so resolutions dot count i plus plus so we're going to loop one by one through the resolutions and we're just going to check and see if screen dot width so the current width of the screen is equal to the resolution at position i so the one we're currently looking at if the screen width is equal to, to the horizontal value and screen height is equal to resolutions at position i dot uh, vertical yeah if is equal to the vertical so basically we're saying let's go back in here if we look at our options screen here we're basically saying check is the resolution equal to 1920 on the width and 1080 on the height is equal to or is it equal to this and this or is it equal to this and this we're looping through each one of those uh, i didn't need to put that extra bracket there and then we want to do here is say if that is the case we'll then set we have found our resolution so we're going to say that is equal to true then we're going to say our selected resolution is equal to i so our selected resolution is whatever loop we're currently on and we're going to update the resolution label to display the correct one so let's save this and we'll go back in here and play now we should be able to verify this in here by switching my full hd uh, i'm going to switch this to do i have a 720 there we go 720p here so when i press play there we go perfect it switched the resolution to the correct one to the one i want let's uh, switch it to do i have 854 i do perfect so let's try that there we go so perfect 854 by 480 let's uh go to put this back onto full hd so we can f make sure that, that is correct that works just fine so perfect it's now showing the correct resolution but what happens if the player has a different resolution on their screen if they have a different strange resolution so let's try a different one here so i've got uh let's go for a 4k resolution if i go ahead and play here well it just says 1920 by 1080 even though that's not available and even though the resolution is set to be a much higher value 
So that's not great. We don't want it to uh, limit what our players have available, obviously, because then if they went and ran the game here, so we have it in 4K at the moment, if I put this on a different resolution, even though I'm running at 4K, and if I wanted to change my full screen on or off and apply my graphic changes, oh, I don't have a resolution option that's correct, so it's going to change my resolution and force it into something much, much worse. So we don't want that to happen. So let's go back in here, and we're going to add a resolution item to our list if we haven't found the resolution. So this is why we're doing a search and keeping track of whether we found it or not. So down here, we're going to say if we have not found the resolution, then our resolution, we're going to create a new resolution item. So res item that we'll call new res is equal to a new res item, like so. So we're just basically creating a new blank one to use. We're going to assign the new res dot horizontal to be equal to whatever our screen width is. So whatever strange size that we have set up that isn't available in our options. And then our new res dot vertical is going to be equal to the screen height, like so. Then in my resolutions list that we already have, I'm going to add that new res item. Then I'm going to, because we, we're adding that to the end of the list, basically, I'm going to set my selected resolution to be equal to our resolutions dot count minus one. And then I'm going to update the resolution label. Okay, so let's save that and let's go back in here. And we'll let this compile and we should hopefully see, I'm going to leave it on the 4K setting here. So if I go ahead and play, there we go, we now have that option available. So now I can switch between all these different settings to keep them in our game. So perfect, that's our resolution system now working correctly and we can switch between them for our players to use whatever setting they want in their own individual games. So that's going to be it for this. We've got the graphics options now working. The next thing will be to make some audio options work in our game. And that's what we're going to take a look at in the next video. So thanks for watching this one. I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness, of course. We'll be continuing this series. If you haven't already, hit that like button, leave some comments, hit the subscribe, all that, you know, YouTube stuff that everyone tells you that you have to do. Because if you don't say it, YouTube don't like it. I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Keep being awesome.